Hi guys, welcome to the first video of lead code POTD series. We will be solving the problem today present on the lead code platform. So today is 16 December. The, the problem of the day for today is weld a valid anagram. So it says given two strings S and T return true if T is an anagram of S and false otherwise. If you guys don't know anagram, what is anagram? So the hint has been provided. An, an anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a word, different word or phrase, typically using all the original letters exactly once. Let's understand what does the statement say. So to define an anagram, I would say that uh, suppose the strings are S and T. S is hello and T is L hello. So these two strings are anagram meaning like the frequency table of S is S E H E L L O. H comes one time, E comes one time, L comes two time if we remove this L, O comes one time and frequency table of two, T is H E L L O. One, one, two, and one. So the frequency table of both the strings match. And if that happens, then both the strings are anagrams. Now, in this case, we have to treat H and H as different. But while solving the problems in the future, the problem statement clearly defines if we have to treat them as different or we do not have to treat them as different. So please be careful while solving the problems in the future when you are giving the online assessments or any of the coding tests. Okay, so let's move to the problem uh, solution. So it is a fairly simple problem. As you can see, uh, the lead code also identifies it as easy problem. So to solve it, the first approach, let me mention approach one. First comes to my mind is simply uh, Make a frequency table of S and then match it with frequency table of T. How can this be achieved? Like we make an array of length. Uh, when can we say of length 256 why 256 please comment down in the answer you might know if you are learning competitive programming or simple programming also now let's suppose the length of s is um, s dot length we know the loop from i equals to 0 up till n minus 1 and first of all, let's call this area as V and fill the V with zeros. Okay. For the loop, inside the loop, you do, do not you do not have to do anything, just V of S of I. Oh sorry. V of int of s of i equals plus equals to 1. It was 0, so it will be increased by 1. If it was 1, it would be it would gradually go to 2. If it was 2, it will gradually go to 3 and etc. etc. In this way, you will get a vector which contains the frequency of all the characters of uh, all the characters of s. Okay. Now, how would we have to match it with a T? Similarly, for i equals to 0 up till n minus 1, it is noteworthy that the length of n, uh, would, the length of the strings would, would be same, only then their frequency tables can be matched. So, you can, as a protective measure, you can use that uh, if x dot length is not equal to t dot length, return false. 
else carry out the procedure we are mentioning right, right now. And for this, we just have to do int of ti minus equals to 1. Now, how can we say that the frequency has been matched or has not been matched? For that, we have to traverse the whole vector again. So, for i equals to 0 up till 255, if v of i is not equal to 0, return false. And if the statement has not been executed once, then it would not have not returned false. So, after the for loop, we can just simply return true. I think the problem statement was and the solution was clearly straightforward and easily understandable. The time complexity and the space complexity, let's analyze that. Time complexity is O of n to traverse the length of n three times. Actually, we are using three times last time to traverse the vector v. So, let's consider two times only. It would not make any effect. It would just be O of n. Space complexity for this is we are using a vector of 256 size, six size, but it is a constant size. So, the space complexity will be O of 1. Coming down to approach 2, it is actually more simpler. The only case it is the time complexity in this case would be O of n log n. And when I say n log n, you should be very alert that n log n somehow relates us to sorting. Yes. When I said sorting, I think most of you would have understand what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that we have S and T. Let's sort them both. Sort S and sort T. Now after sorting, isn't this evident that if S equals to equals to T, the, they were valid anagrams. Else, they were not, so return false. In this case, return true. I guess it was fairly simple. I will code it, I will code both the approaches for you. Let's follow to the problem section. Yeah, let me approach the second problem first or second approach first because that was fairly simple. It's just a three line code. For that, I will just use sort s dot begin from s dot. And I'll copy the statement. T dot begin, T dot end, and I will just return return as equals to equals to D. If they are equal, it will run true. If they are not equal, it will run false. Let's run it. It is running fine. Let's try to submit it. The problem has been submitted. Congratulations, we have completed our first day. Now let's go to the approach number. Approach. For that, I have to create a vector of type int. Name it as v. Size, I'm keeping it as 256. Initializing all the cells as 0. Now for int i equals to 0 i less than s dot length i plus plus traversing the string v of int of s i plus plus now instead of running an, a loop again i am just doing v of int of t i minus minus and here i can just for a safety measure if s dot length is not equal to t dot length return false now i'm traversing the vector to check if there is no negative or positive present for int i for auto it i can use iterate iterator which would be more correct for me for auto it in v if it 
is not equals to zero return false else return true hope that works let's try and run it it is running fine let's try to submit it congratulations it has been submitted thank you for watching the video please don't forget to like and subscribe see you again next